Imagine a wildfire burning intensely in the forest. We've all seen this image on the news. Fire in the tops of trees, spreading for miles, embers flying in every direction. This is what we call a crown fire. Crown fires are very hot and they're very hard to put out. So because of these images, a lot of us are concerned that trees are going to be the cause of our homes burning down. In fact, individual trees are very seldom the cause of the ignition that burns down our homes. Welcome to Wildfire Watch. My name is Rich Shortall. I'm the executive coordinator of FireSafe Marin. Today, we're gonna to learn a lot about trees, how to maintain them, how to make our homes safer, and how to protect ourselves from wildfire. But first, let's hear from some individual citizens in Marin County talking about what their concerns are about trees in their neighborhoods. Fires seem inevitable. We can always do things to protect ourselves, even if what that means. So our concern is these tall eucalyptus trees that uh, are along the ridge line here. And when the north wind blows, when the fire winds blow, they could potentially catch fire and rain, leaves and fire all across our neighborhood. And like eucalyptus and cypress and things like that that are very large and it's hard to know exactly who who's responsible for those trees. We've noticed a lot of trees falling on the paths, causing a lot of fuel and fear of fire. Clearly we have an undergrowth fire load problem out here. We need to get this out to avoid the catastrophes that have hit other communities. So well, what can I do about that? We have a lot of invasives, uh, specifically acacias, and those can be pretty flammable. So we're making sure that we're removing those. We planted deep-rooted plants, such as this big maple leaf tree, and these help with um, the deep roots that they have to stabilize the soil. Hopefully, if they have access to the creek bed, they'll stay green longer, and we're hoping that possibly they can prevent fires anyway. And what I see on my own home is a lot of the dead brush that I've cleared out, and I'm very thankful I was able to do that. We had quite a few trees trimmed, but the whole area around Ring Mountain is still a huge concern, and we're trying to work on it daily. Well, as we've heard, trees and wildfire are very much on the mind of Marin residents. So let's talk some more about trees. We're lucky to have with us today Lynn Osgood, who's the Deputy Fire Marshal from the Novato Fire District. Mm -hmm. And she is quite the tree expert, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what her experiences are in dealing with tree hazards. So, Lynn, the first picture we have here is very iconic Marin, mm -hmm. Civic Center, surrounded by trees. Mm -hmm. Should Marin residents be concerned with all these trees? I would say that trees are absolutely not the issue um, when it comes to wildfire. What Marin residents really need to be concerned about is hardening their homes and maintaining their trees. That is the first and foremost goal of every resident is to maintain their trees. Great. Well, we have a follow-up photo here from Paradise. Okay. Wildfire went through there. Mm -hmm. And what are we seeing here? What you're looking at right here is you, you can see a lot of houses that burn down, but you also see a lot of green trees around those homes. And more often than not, the house catches on fire from the ember production and actually will catch the tree on fire. So the home is catching the tree on fire and not the other way around because the embers is what is burning the house down and not the tree. Well, that's a really important lesson for all of us. So with that said, people have a lot of concerns as we see in this photograph mm -hmm. of very large trees that are mm -hmm. close to homes. Do these look like a, a problem to you? Absolutely not. Actually, each house, um, on the one side you have an oak tree. It's very healthy, very well maintained. I would suggest that you contact an arborist and help them maintain the health of the trees. What can you do? How do you prune the tree back? By code, you should trim the tree limbs back 10 feet from the roof line or the chimney and um, be aware of a tree like an oak tree will drop leaves into your gutters, your roof line. So you really want to pay attention to maintaining the leaf litter and clutter around the house from those trees. The tree on the right is a maple tree. It's a deciduous tree, it has a lot of moisture in it. Um, it does not pose a fire danger whatsoever to that house. Great. So healthy trees, maintenance is the answer. Absolutely. When in doubt, call the arborist. Mm -hmm. Not all trees are healthy. Sometimes no. you run into this. What do you think? 
Well, you have what you have here is a, a great example of a fuel ladder. Um, the, in this case, though, you have a fence that's actually part of the fuel load. So if that fence catches on fire, you have vegetation around the fence and you have vegetation right underneath a tree that does not look healthy to me. There's a lot of dead underbrush um, within the tree um, and you also it looks like a dead pine tree right next to it. So it would be very easy for a fire to get into that tree and then to the house next to it. So talk about how fire gets in the tree. Mm -hmm. I think something we call fire ladders. Fire ladders. So this is a great example. We had a grass fire in Novato, and uh, you can see there we have some eucalyptus trees. Um, and the eucalyptus trees have a lot of leaf um, litter that accumulates underneath them. And right below that house, they had an old wooden staircase that led right down into the grass and into that leaf litter. So what started as a small grass fire found its way to the leaf litter to those wooden stairs and up into the house. And so that is your classic fire ladder right there. Right. So we don't just want to maintain the trees. We need to maintain what's on the ground. Absolutely. Up to the tree. Absolutely. There we go. Good. Well, here it looks like they did a better job. Trees are limbed up in this photo, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a great example. This is probably somewhere up in the Sierra. So mm -hmm. you can tell that the types of trees are, are similar. Um, and you have a low heat ground fire. So it's moving very nicely through the forest floor. It's clearing out the underbrush as it should, but it's not getting up into the trees. And you'll also notice that the house itself has really good defensible space. Um, I don't see any clutter around the house, around the first five feet. Um, I don't see any bushes directly around that house. And so that house um, has a very high likelihood of surviving a wildfire. Great, so no fuel ladders. No fuel ladders. Trees are limbed up. Great defensible space. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the last one. I think these would be our evacuation routes. Yes, and you know, looking at the one on the left, that is not um, a healthy evacuation route by any <laughs> means. I wouldn't want to have to drive through that in the event of a fire. What you have is you have connectivity between the crowns of both trees on either side of the road. You have quite a bit of underbrush um, and combustible underbrush underneath those trees. So the likelihood of um, those tree ca trees catching on fire is pretty high. It would be very difficult to drive out if those trees were on fire in the event of evacuation. The photo on the right-hand side is a va evacuation route that has been cleared properly. The trees have been limbed up. There's no underbrush underneath the trees or the canopy. Great. Well, that's good lessons. That's where we want to go. We want to maintain our evacuation route mm -hmm. so we can get out safely. Well, Lynn, thanks very much for spending time with us today. Really appreciate it quite a bit. Thank you. As you can see, Lynn pointed out that maintenance is the critical thing when dealing with trees to make our home safe. So now let's hear from our do-it-yourself specialist, Aaron Harris, who's gonna to talk to us about exactly how to maintain some of these trees in safely. wildfire world this is Aaron Harris the DIY guy with fire safe Marin and I'm here to talk about trees your tree your neighbor's tree how do they affect us and wildfire but I'm not alone I'm with Ray Moritz urban forester fire ecologist tree guru how how wildfire tree tree wildfire tell us well trees provide us many benefits they provide a shade they provide us beauty. I like trees. They reduce the temperature under the canopy. Also good. They raise the moisture in the, of the air under the canopy. Okay. So in many ways, they dampen down fire. Okay. And reduce fire behavior. So trees are good. Well, it's not that simple. Trees can exacerbate fire, and it depends how we manage them, how we maintain them. Maintenance is the key. Let's learn to maintain our trees. Let's do that. All right, Ray, where are we headed? Right over this way. So some trees can be problematic when it comes to wildfire? That's right. Huh. What, what's our situation here? Well, we have a pine tree here, and it has a lot of fine material. Fine material ignites easily and burns intensely. I would use that to start a fire. In fire ecology, we call that having a high surface to volume ratio. Whereas this plant here, English laurel, 
has stout twigs and big lush leaves, it's harder for the fire to drive off the moisture and ignite this. So around our property, we want to get rid of the high surface to volume ratio plants and emphasize the low surface to volume ratio plants. How, how would you protect this pine here? What would you do? You can keep the pine as long as you maintain it correctly. Maintenance is the key. Okay. You want to limit up. Okay. And trees are often the victim of the plants around them. Okay. So you want to clear these high surface to volume ratio plants like this tea tree here. Yep. And that'll help protect the pine and keep it from igniting. Spend some time getting rid of all this tinder, these, the pine needles they've dropped, and that'll be safer. Absolutely. Let's check out what else is happening in this yard and uh, let's learn some more, right? Yeah, let's take a look right over here. Let me show you this, Aaron. This plant here has a lot of problems in a fire. And it has fine twigs and if you take those leaves and, and crush them, you'll smell the volatile oils in the leaves. That makes it more flammable. Also, it has a sub canopy of dead material. This oh. dead material loses its moisture more quickly than living tissue and makes it more available to a fire. So, so this plant in its condition can burn quite intensely. Perfect situation to ignite inside and then it's got built in lighter fluid on the outside. Would you remove this? What would you do with it? Well, not necessarily. Well, I might want to clean up that dead material and get it out of there and, and regularly maintain it and separate it from other plants so you don't have a continuous bed of fuel. Spreading, spreading, spreading. I am ready to work. I've been carrying this, this sword, this saw. Show me what I got. What, what are we going to do next, Ray? Let's go right over here and we'll talk about ladder fuel. Whoa, look what we have here. Where do fires typically start? Along roads. And what, we've got fine ignition fuels here. We've got heavy ground fuels. We've got a continuous layer of dead material up into the tree. We want to interrupt that ladder fuels, that fire ladder. So let's start right here. Okay. What should I do, Ray? You want to cut this limb right outside what's called the branch collar. You see okay. this swollen area? Okay. So you're always cutting a limb one to two inches out from its attachment either to another limb or the trunk. So go ahead. And this Hold is... it there one second, okay. Aaron. First you want to make your undercut. Okay. So that you don't tear the bark when okay. it breaks off. How's that? So you make a little undercut. That's right, and Perfect. now you're overcut. All right, man, all day long, I've been ready. Here I go, Ray. Oh, lumberjack that I am. Oh, no fair. Ah, it felt so good, Ray. Give me a boost. Give me a boost. I want to get up there. Oh, oh, hold, hold a minute. Okay. You don't want to go climbing trees unless you're a professional. But I did so well. Yeah, but up there, you can probably, you could use a small pole saw, but if it takes a ladder or it takes a chainsaw, Leave it to the professionals. Oh. They're far too dangerous for the average homeowner. I'm clearly not ready for the chainsaw, but what I can do is maintain. I can rake leave, I can put effort in, and I can, I can love this tree. So you too, people, if it's a rake, if it's a saw, if it's loppers, any love you put to your tree is gonna make your house safer and keep these beautiful trees safe. This is Aaron Harris, DIY guy. Go get him. Put some maintenance and love in, people. Ray, thank you, sir. I feel smarter. It's my pleasure. Let's go. People tell me every day that their neighbor's tree is a huge fire hazard. There are really two myths in that statement. One, that their neighbor's property is more dangerous than theirs, and second, that trees themselves are a huge hazard. The reality is in Marin, the types of trees that grow here naturally, the, the coastal hardwoods, the redwood trees, are not a significant fire hazard if they're well maintained. It's what's on the ground beneath them that creates a hazard and that's fairly easy to clean up. Raking the leaves that fall out of the trees, limbing the trees up themselves and cleaning up dead vegetation will fix that hazard and make you safer. 
The reality is you need to start at your own front door and work your way out. What's on your property is usually a bigger hazard than what's on your neighbor's property. So we learned today from Ray Moritz that trees properly maintained do not present a serious fire hazard. But that's really not the whole story. It's true there are some trees that really are not very safe and should be removed. We're lucky to have Marin County's fire chief, Jason Weber, in a little segment we call Weber's Weber, telling you a little bit about some of these hazardous trees. Right. I have arrived. I have arrived at Chief Jason Weber's barbecue. Weber's Weber. I am validated, sir. I'm excited to have you here today. This is going to be a great day. We're going to have a lot of fun, and we've got a great barbecue ahead of us. I've come hungry. I've come hungry. I'm ready to eat. What are we doing in here? Sorry to disappoint you. Today, this is my lab. We're here to talk a little bit about the dangers of Italian cypress, especially those that are used for screening between homes in Marin County. I can't eat this, but I should light it. Let's light this bad Oh, no, no, up. I have something much more exciting. Let's take a look over here. Come on, let's go. Chief Jason Weber, what's the story with this? What's going on here? So Aaron, I brought you over to this piece of the barbecue because I wanted to talk to you about the dangers of Italian cypress, especially when they're used as screening material between homes in Marin County. When you look at the Italian cypress, just the amount of dead material that sits inside of these trees is explosive. Not to mention the live fuel or the live part of the plant is full of uh, dangerous oils that are almost explosive. When we had the glass fire come into Santa Rosa, I saw many homes that were lost because of this and juniper. It's all preventable and we want to talk to our residents about eliminating this. And this is a little bit dangerous, so I brought some friends along to help us with this demonstration and keep Wait, it safe. We're going to light this up? So I've asked Mike to come in and help us demonstrate just how a single ember landing in this Italian cypress can start the fire and spread so rapidly. Let's get out of the way and let him show us. Mike, light it up. So during an ember situation, embers will be falling in this, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're talking about by an ember shower and how dangerous those can be. You can see just one little ignition um, can set the, the entire row of Italian cypress on fire. Um, and, and they burn like Roman candles. I often refer to them when we're in the field. Uh, and not only is the, the rapid burning dangerous near a house, but it also creates an enormous amount of embers themselves that are then spread over, over the top houses uh, and, and existing neighbors, um, which is really problematic. It's crazy how it's just jumping up. It's, it's, it's happening. Like I couldn't start a, a bonfire like that. No, exactly. And this is the challenge with Italian Cypress. It's, it's set up so when the wind hits it, it's very receptive to that. Um, you can see, you know, just how readily it burns even when it's green. Uh, and it does just travel like a Roman candle from the bottom all the way up to the top. And then the deal is it, it passes on and then starts kicking embers and... And the fire just leapfrogs from one house to the next. And all of a sudden we have three or four homes on fire uh, and, and we still don't have a fire truck here yet. Oh, so fast. It just moves so quickly. And that the, gr the green oily, ow. And you're, Dude, you're starting to see what what's happening here is this is just raining on us, hot embers. And this would start um, another and fire. We're, we're a distance from the, uh, and we're a distance from, from the fire itself. And this would start another fire. You know, with our changing climate and high winds, like those red flag days, that's what you're worried about. One of these kicking off and then spreading through a community. That's exactly it. And you know, 20, 30 mile an hour winds. I watched uh, with the glass fire, um, you know, a small juniper in a front yard stretch fire all the way across uh, the road, over sidewalks and into neighbors' houses and started their vegetation on fire. And, and that's exactly what occurs with these, with these mega fires and it's, it's challenging. You know, I, I mean, people want their privacy, but there are other options, wider leaf plants or anything but, but a, a Roman candle next to your Absolutely. house. Absolutely, and this is why our partnership with Fire Safe Marin is so important and having uh, a plant list that, that's available for people to make good choices uh, that protect their home, protect their families, allow them to evacuate 
you see these a lot of times on driveways and you can imagine how frightening it would be to try to drive past this and especially a row of 20 or 30 of them when you're trying to evacuate from your house you can see just like a set of dominoes falling uh, these Italian cypress do the same thing they just go from one spot to the next I'm gonna step back a little bit I think you're, you're uh, I think you're wise man I can feel it I mean I would not want these next to my house. No, and we're 20, 30 feet from, from these. I can and feel the heat, You can though. feel the heat coming off of it. You can see where the embers are landing. We're gonna defend a house that, that is defendable. Right. Um, and that's the importance of creating defensible space. It's not just to save the house, it's also to protect our firefighters who are risking their lives to be there and save the house. Getting rid of things like this really helps us. Chief Jason Weber, I never want to see that again. Nor do I. Let's keep the fire in the barbecue. And let's keep Italian Cypress out of Marin. Cheers, everybody. Enjoy the barbecue. Thanks for keeping it safe, fellas. Great job. Well, as we just learned, Italian Cypress trees are in fact quite hazardous. The good news is they're easy to get rid of. You can just chop them down. There's not complicated roots. It's a fairly simple fix. So with that said, let's move on now to our segment called Firebeat, where we have Mark Brown, Executive Officer from the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority to update us on the latest fire news. Hi, I'm Mark Brown, the Executive Officer for the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. And with this weather we've been having lately, we are in a transition period from peak fire season to winter preparedness. In fact, we recently had a fire called the Loma Fire, on Loma Alta, which is between Lucas Valley and Sleepy Hollow. The fire occurred under red flag conditions. In fact, it occurred during the peak of the wind. The fire ran up the slope and it hit a road that wasn't quite at the top of the slope, and we call that a mid-slope road, and it stopped at that road. We almost never see fires stop at mid-slope roads, especially under red flag conditions. So why did this happen? Well, it happened on private property, ranch land, and there's been very effective land management from the rancher on that land. And they've been moving their livestock around in a very effective way to create a fuel break for us. And this creates fire resiliency. And it helps keep us keep a fire from going from one valley to the next. And it really has reinforced the strategy that we've created for what we're calling the Greater Ross Valley Fuel Break. It's in the planning stages right now, and we're scoping it now. And what does scoping mean? It means that we're planning exactly where that shaded fuel break is going to be. It's along the wildland urban interfaces edge. So what is a shaded fuel break? It's where we remove the unhealthy trees, the smaller unhealthy trees, keep the large healthy trees, we limb them up, remove, we remove some of the unhealthy fire prone plants. And what it does is it decreases the intensity of a fire by keeping a fire on the ground instead of allowing it to get up into the canopies of the trees. This slows down the rate of spread and allows us to have our uh, residents evacuate in a timely fashion under safe conditions and it allows our firefighters to get in and take action on the fire. During the, the scoping phase, we're also going through our environmental compliance and we are gonna have community forums where we are gonna invite members of the impacted community so they can come and learn what we're doing and they can provide input while we create it. And it's really a strategic break across the entire Ross Valley and is an example of what we would like to do in the future throughout all of the MWPA. And now with the rain, the question I've been getting a lot is, is fire season over? Well, it's paused right now. Very welcome indeed that we got all that rain. We definitely need the water. However, if we don't continue to get rain, healthy amounts of rain in a healthy uh, timing time frame, fire season can return. In fact, we had a fire the next day on Angel Island right after that rain. And it, what, the reason is because we, the fuels take a little bit of time to actually absorb the water. And if we, with all that rain, a lot of it didn't get absorbed into the fuels. So if we don't continue to have rain, those fuels are gonna be available to burn. And after every year that we've had a drought busting rain, we have a critical fire season. And that's because the medium and heavy fuels take years to recover following the drought. And with all this rain, we're getting an abundant crop of grass and fine fuels, and they will always dry out. And during the summer, they will be able to go into those dry, medium and heavy fuels and create critical fire conditions. 
So what does this mean to you? It means that you use the winter to prepare, just like we do in a fire service. This is a great time for you to plant your drought resistant and fire resistant plants. This is a great time for you to focus on your home hardening so you can be prepared for the fire season when it comes. Thank you and stay safe. That brings us to the last part of our show. I've got a few questions that have come in for residents about trees. The first one is a very unmarine tree problem, and that has to do with palm trees. Are palm trees flammable? As you can see from this photo, in fact, they can be very flammable. But like all trees, the real trick is maintenance. Palm trees have a husk that's very flammable. It's fibrous. So that needs to be maintained properly and dead branches need to be cut away, just like with any other tree. So I have another question here, and this comes from a resident with a lot of very large trees on their property. And they're not really sure where to get started in taking care of their trees. I got this rich. Get out your saw, get out your rake. A little bit of love is all it takes. Clear out your brush, give them space. Trees give what's life for goodness sake. Take care of your trees, Marin. Do it. Maintenance, maintenance.